been on the journey of the Nigerian British community in focus, uh, focusing on the Nigerian sub economy in the United Kingdom over the past 70 years. Uh, this particular area uh, has been home to significant numbers of Nigerians over the past uh, many, many, many years. Uh, today, I can say that uh, the strength of uh, the Nigerian presence here continues to increase. Uh, we are focusing this particular segment on the Nigerian economy, the sub-economy uh, of the Nigerian community here in the UK. Statistics show clearly that the vested investment currently hovers at about the 70 billion mark. And this uh, comes in form of different areas of investment. It comes in form of real estate, uh, stocks and shares, various businesses uh, ranging from services to the retail outlet all accumulated to form this particular substantial uh, figure. But today I am sitting in a location that has been home to uh, Nigerians for a significant number of years. Average property within the northwest London area, uh, talking about say a four bedroom detached home, uh, rates at about a million pounds. And if you do a multiplier in that effect, looking at the numbers that reside within this area, I guess the addition is evidence of the strength of the Nigerian economy in the United Kingdom. We're going to carry on in this journey. We'll all be viewing a number of properties just to give us an insight into what the type of properties that they do live within and also the level of investment that has actually been put into this particular area. So join with me as I carry on in this journey, Nigerian British in focus, focusing on the Nigerian economy in the United Kingdom. Over the past 70 years, we know for certain that Nigerians have invested quite significantly within the United Kingdom business environment, whether it's in the retail sector, in education, in entertainment, uh, in the food business, and of course, even within the services. This very day, I will be speaking with a gentleman who provides a unique service. Uh, this is a service that definitely has impacted many, many lives in our dear country, Nigeria. He's into finance, but specifically in the remittance business. Okay. So we're going to be listening to him and hearing his views on how the remittances has impacted and will continue to impact the Nigerian economy. Given the very fact that the annual investment through the remittances into Nigeria from the diaspora is actually bigger than our revenue. We will be talking about all this in the course of our discussion uh, uh, today. So let me welcome my guest uh, to uh, the program. Uh, Mr. John Emory, focusing on the Nigerian economy in the United Kingdom over the past 70 years. Can you tell us briefly about yourself, your background, and where you were born, uh, your academic background, family? Just let's have an insight into the man called John Emory. Good day. Thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity to um, introduce myself. I was born in London in 1960 and uh, attended uh, a nursery school here, I can't remember the name, and I was, I was shipped back to Lagos where I attended Lady Luck Institute for my primary school and then to CMS Grammar School where I did my secondary education. From there I moved over to the um, University of Benin where I studied mechanical engineering, then to University of Lagos, where I did my executive MBA, and came to the UK, attended uh, King's College London, where I did uh, robotics. From there, I went to Babic College and did my MSc in mathematical finance. And since then, I've been, uh, I've been working. Thank you very much, Mr. Murray. Looks as though there's been a, quite a bit of academics there. Uh, but going by uh, what you have achieved 
to date, uh, it's more within the business environment. You've literally built for yourself a substantial business uh, operations in the United Kingdom. Let's have some background on how you started business and how the business have evolved over the years. When I graduated from the um, University of Lagos, I decided to open a video shop. And I was one of the first, in fact, the first to computerize the shop. And it was, a, it was a, a new thing, and people were flocking in. Then I moved into um, building construction, got a contract from uh, Mushi local government at that time, built a Terai Kate office. And at that particular time, my wife was doing her medical postgraduate studies in the UK, so I decided to join her. Then I went through the academics again and then formed microsystems. And the rest of the state is history. <laughs> very, very impressive, uh, Mr. Murray. Without a doubt, um, setting up business in the United Kingdom, you know, uh, someone who nearly returned from Nigeria, uh, the difference between the way business is done in Nigeria and the United Kingdom, what were the challenges you experienced at the onset? Could you just share? You know, some of the, what can be described as possibly difficult moments in actually setting up business and growing the business in the United Kingdom. It's very interesting. Actually, when I came to the United Kingdom, the first thing I wanted to do was to work and get experience. Then I had some challenges. The challenge was that I had too many degrees and every interview I go, if I apply, they always call me because my name sounds English. They were always coming for an interview. And then when they see me, they recall and say, oh, no, you are too, you're overqualified. Uh, nobody, nobody will take orders from you. So I decided, okay, I will apply for technical positions, which are below engineering. And the next thing, they will also tell me exactly the same thing. You are overqualified. And then I decided, okay. I will go and form my own company. I did, and it was IT, programming. And um, IT has been a very good uh, area because there are not, at that time, there were not many Caucasians in need. So if you can deliver, they employ you, or they give you the contract. And that was the major, major thing that happened to us. And as, as immediately I got that, I tried to tell as many Nigerians as possible, go into IT. There is money in it, and there's very little discrimination, because the manpower is just not there. Well, again, you know, what one would describe as trap by default. So your academic strength put you in a position of what, again, one would say was a disadvantage, but ultimately turned out to be a great advantage. I guess during that period, you would have been wondering that, my goodness, why did I bother myself to accumulate so many, many qualifications? But in hindsight, it has really helped to get you where you desire uh, to be. And we know that your business has grown tremendously over the years and it's continuing to expand on many fronts. Now, because you are the center front of um, a lot of activities to do with the Nigerian economy, and one which we are very, very much aware of is the transfers of funds to Nigeria, the remittances. Before I ask, a very, very pungent question. What I want to find out from you, if you can share with us, is your thoughts of the Nigerian economy in the United Kingdom. How would you qualify the Nigerian sub economy in the UK? Nigerians are very, very versatile and very hardworking. Yeah, we know there are a few bad eggs uh, trying to make money from nothing. 
but Nigerians set up businesses all over the, all over the UK, and these businesses are, are thriving. The only regret is that we tend not to um, patronize the Nigerian economy. If not so, we will have grown ten times what we are today. The the economy is growing slowly but surely. Nigerians are beginning to be self-employed. They don't depend on the PAYE route. They own their businesses, they are employers of labor. And I'm proud to I'm proud to see them do that. As regards the uh, foreign exchange, we conservatively about one million pounds sterling is remitted daily. Conservatively. And the 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 reason why it has not had a huge effect or seen in the Nigerian economy is because it is spent on consumables. Let me come in there. That is a very, very, very key point. Two things. How would you advise that the sub-economy, largely the relationship and business amongst Nigerians is more harmonized and, you know, uh, boosted? What would, you, what would you suggest? The greatest impact that we we'll have is if Nigerians patronize Nigerians. Because if we do that, irrespective of the fact that because of economies of scale, our prices might be a bit, a little bit more expensive. But we've got to patronize each other. That is the only way we can grow. Once we start to patronize each other, others will follow. We have things like Nollywood going on, and we find, we find other nations beginning to enjoy it. We have IT experts, we have medical personnel, there's no hospital you go to where you won't find one Nigerian doctor or a nurse. So we've got to find a way to harmonize that economy. I'm happy now that uh, we have Kanuk, but Kanuk has not been very effective. They should have been the central body that Nigerians in diaspora can depend on, can say, look, these are our go-to. So if we can get that and get it working and advertise and encourage Nigerians to patronize other Nigerians, no matter what, go out there to their restaurant, eat, stop going to the Chinese, stop going to the Chinese restaurant, go, go to uh, a Nigerian barbing saloon, go to the hairdressers, buy, made in, buy anything that you see that is made in Nigeria to encourage more made in Nigerian things to come in. That is how we go. Because we know that the official number in terms of population of Nigerians in the United Kingdom is under a million. But unofficial, we know that Nigerians are close to two million. And if we only just consider, in line with what you're saying with regards to the strength of the Nigerian sub-economy, if we start to consider the multiplier Taking an average home owner, multiplying about 300,000 homes owned by Nigerians in the United Kingdom, 60,000 pounds, averagely, which is a very low, low level. It's quite staggering. You did say, with regards to the transfers into Nigeria, a million pounds per day. Of course, because of where you sit, uh, you are in a better position to authoritatively make such a statement. That literally translates to th close to 365 million pounds a year. But how is that reflected on the home economy? 365 million pounds per annum. We know that the recorded amount uh, that uh, literally hovers around is 25, 25 billion 
but 365 million, which effectively we're talking about close to a billion pounds. But how is that reflected on our local economy? Fortunately, I would say conservatively, more than 75% of that money goes into consumption. Either to pay rent, pay for medical bills, pay for food, you know. So nothing is going into the productive economy because we've not had um, we've not had the government help in making sure that entry into the economy is easy. It is so difficult to set up a, com a company in Nigeria. If it's not the taxes, it will be the unofficial taxes. You pay for virtually everything. You are your own, you are your own uh, uh, power con uh, generator, you are your own water board, you, are your, you pay, and you pay for everything. You know, and you can't get anything done unless you breathe palms of officials. It is so sad. So the government, they do come here, they, they've come, governments have been coming to say, come and invest, come and invest, but it's all talk. The minute they leave, you go there, all they are looking for is, oh, he has just come from abroad, and they are going to milk you. So that has been the main problem. If that avenue, because Nigerians are very good at investing at home. So majority of their investment now is in brick and mortar. But that's that's where they have some control, some form of control. So if the government really, really wants that economy to grow, that means the amount of money that is coming in, they've got to help Nigerians in diaspora to get into the business market with easier process, less constraints. What role do you think NITCOM, uh, that's the Nigerian in diaspora uh, commission headed by Honorable Abike Dabiri Erewa, what role do you think the organization can actually play in helping to create a seamless process, particularly in the area of investment? Thank God for Dabiri uh, because she has actually moved the needle. She started some programs that are helping Nigerians. But I used to tell Nigerians, why should Nigerians go and get a visa to go back to his own country? Why? You know? So she's beginning to react. And I know she has constraints. First in Nidcom, I believe things will begin to turn because we don't know who to turn to when the, the certain things happen back home. You send money home and it gets into the wrong hands. You don't know how to retrieve it. So we need all those, we need, we need, the embassy has not been to, it's not helping that much. But I, I've been getting to get news that the new, the new regime there are promising something good. People are beginning to get visa quicker. We've been promised that uh, passports will come out faster and that they will start to listen. Once they start to listen to us, Nigerians are very good at, at um, investing, at pumping money back home, if they know there's, um, there's a body that would look after them. If I, if I go to Nigeria and it's my first time in, it's my first time in Nigeria after a long time, I need somebody to guide me. But what happens now is they are going to, they are going to depend on family members. They are going to depend on cousins. They are going to depend, and these people know they are coming from abroad. So they are more interested in what they get off you than what you are going to pump into the system. So, but if you have, if before you leave, somebody has given you guidelines. When you get to Nigeria, don't do this, do that. If you have this problem, go here. If you do this, do that. Even when you go with your go to your cousin and he starts saying no 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 go this way you start saying no. This is what I this is what I was told. This is what is happening now. This is the official channel. You know. So 
from all indication, you are hopeful. Yeah. And I believe that that is the spirit that should be adopted by all. Mr. John Emory, thank you very, very much for the time that you've given us today, uh, sharing your thoughts and telling us about uh, yourself and, of course, your business activities. And this concludes another session of Nigerian British Community in Focus, focusing on the Nigerian economy in the United Kingdom. Do join with me as we carry on on this journey. There is still much ahead of us. Wishing you all well. Thank you very much. <laughs>